I get to talk about the English horn, which is a member of the oboe family, has a deeper, mellower sound than an oboe. Composers like to use it for melancholy moments. They also use it to evoke love feelings when the music is talking about tender emotions. Hi everyone, my name is Ken Bronstein and I am a member of the oboe section of the Bellingham Symphony Orchestra. I'm here today to talk to you about a member of the oboe family that you'll find in the oboe section. Now the oboe itself will be introduced to you by one of my colleagues in the symphony. Today I get to talk to you about the English horn. Now, if the oboe is considered the soprano voice in the oboe section, the English horn can be thought of as the alto voice. It's a little bit lower, deeper, kind of a more mellow sound. Um, the English horn actually is not English at all. Um, the English horn and the oboe family are all of French origin. The English horn originally was called, and is still called in many countries, the Corps Anglais, uh, which has been translated to English horn. But musicologists think that originally it was the Corps Anglais angle horn because the original English horn actually was bent. The English horn we have today is straight, but there is one thing that is bent about it, and it's the tube that comes out of the top, and that's called the vocal. So composers um, started writing a lot more for the English horn in orchestras in the Romantic period. The classical period, Beethoven, Mozart, they knew of the English horn, and there are some pieces written for that instrument, but the composers of the Romantic era liked the English horn a lot and used that in famous English horn melody. So let's take a look at these two members of the oboe section. First the oboe and then the English horn. Here is an oboe. You can see it's made of wood and it has keys. Uh, the oboe also uses a reed here that goes in. And there's the oboe. Now the English horn is quite a bit longer. And the English horn has the vocal that comes out of the end. And when we get down to the bell, you can see that it's a goose egg shape. This is the vocal I spoke about, and this goes into the English horn. Here's what the English horn sounds like. Well, here's what the reed sounds like. Not so great, huh? Hopefully when we put it on the horn, it'll be more pleasing. Let's take a look at the oboe and English horn reeds. First, here's the oboe reed. You can see that it is um, a cork tube and tied onto the tube with nylon thread is the cane or the vibrating part of the reed. Here is the English horn reed. The English horn reed does not have the cork tube. It's on a metal staple tied on again with nylon thread and has the same cane, but you can see that the English horn reed is wider and longer than the oboe reed. Let's take a look at the parts that go into making an English horn reed. Here is an oboe tube with the cork that goes into the oboe and the cane is tied 
onto the end of the tube. This is the English horn tube. There is no cork. It goes onto the end of the bocal. So here's the cane from the bamboo. And here's the shaper, and we will shape it on this. We'll dip it cane. We score it. can be folded and then it will go on the shaper and we tie the cane onto the tube. To do that I use nylon thread. Here's the introduction of the famous theme from Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet by the English. Another famous tune that you'll recognize is this theme from the Polovetsian dances from the opera Prince Igor by Alexander Borodin. It's a pretty famous tune, and when the, first, when the tune is first introduced, it starts with the oboe, and then the English horn finishes the tune. So I will play the English horn portion, and then we will play the clip of the full orchestra with the English horn leading with the oboe leading into the English horn. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn about the English horn. I hope that when you're listening to music in the future, whether it's in a movie, or on TV, or live, you will listen for the sound of the English horn, and I think you'll hear it quite a lot. And I hope in the future to see you at the Bellingham Symphony Orchestra. We have a lot of great music programmed for our next season and there will be some really nice English horn solos as well. So thank you, and I'll see you at the symphony.